Tonight, I go on stage at the Brea Improv. I meet a guy, and I go, hey, this is a good-looking guy. I'm taking him back to his car, and I'm going to suck his dick. What do I? What am I thinking about as I blow this man? You have to think that like you can't get your teeth involved because you don't want to hurt them. You have to be able to... You have to psych yourself up to where you like, or unless you really like the guy already, then it's going to happen naturally. But you have to be able to like have natural excitement so that your mouth is saliva, sal- salivating. <laughs> Wait, are you ever? Because otherwise, it's dry. So you, but some. So, you know what I mean? It's like it, no. That's it, why I'm asking. If. Okay. All right, we're gonna pick this up. You're not off the hook. I hate that guy. I don't hate that. Yeah, we don't like he him either. He was a dick. Really? I have never, in all the years, all my seven years of visiting improvs, they're always the best employees ever. And that guy, they really are. That guy there's one weird. guy. There's one outlier. Uh, I don't want it to be a whole thing of blowjob talk, but it is. Mm-hmm. I, but I'm asking you because I had no idea that this whole, that you thought. But also, I think part of it is that as a girl, I hang out with a lot of dudes, and you constantly hear guys talking about. Like, I think there's a lot of talk of girls being bad at it. So then you like freak out. You're like, fuck, I don't want to be like the girl that's horrible. I want to be the guy that's great at it. But it's definitely much easier than what you guys have to do, I'm sure. I don't know what's going on down there, and I (laughs) own one of them. (laughs) I will say this. I would like to go to a gay bar, meet a gay guy who knows I'm uber straight, and suck his dick and blow his mind. You would? Fuck yeah. I mean, it's it's not going to happen, but like, how... That gay guy's and no one would believe his story. He'd be like, "Oh, let me tell you about Mrs. Moore. Let me tell you about Miss Thing." And then he would tell other gay guys that like he met me at a gay bar and I sucked his dick, and they see me on like the red carpet with my wife, and all his friends would be like, they "That's never. so not true." And they're like, "No, he was great at it, girl." And then that would be like my private secret. Yeah, well, that's a weird fantasy that I've never heard no, any guy a- say. All right, first of all, Jen ca- it's kind of a fantasy. You kind of got excited when you were well, talking. I was kind about of ma- it. trying to make a bit out of it. <laughs> I could tell you my fantasy. It's just to have more kids and to live on Kauai. It's very basic. It doesn't involve blowing more men. More kids? Really? You want more? Oh, I want like eight. I would do six. Six kids. One of those creepy families where the family portrait goes all the way down the hallway. Man. But you got to put it in that creepy like hallway when you walk down to the restroom and everybody looks like this. And all the kids are dressed in those sweater vests. Yeah. I want enough kids that I can put them all in sweater vests where you go, hey, all your kids are in sweater vests. Because you have two boys and they're in sweater vests, nobody notices. Yeah. But if you have five and they're all in sweater vests. You can make a boy band. Yeah, the sweater vests. I'm just going to keep saying sweater vests. (laughs) Uh, All right, Jen Murphy's about to go on stage at the Brea Improv, and then we're going to pick this up after the show. Where are you performing late March? Late March, I'll be at the Hollywood Improv, March 23rd. I'm headlining the Irvine Improv on April 16th. My April first 16th, time. go see Jen Murphy at the Irvine Improv and at Jen Murphy Comedy on Twitter, right? One N, yeah. Jen Murphy Comedy, yeah. One N. You're not like, you know, one of those people with two N's in their name. Like, this I think, is so delicious. I'm sucking the whole thing down. Let's be very specific about what you're talking about. <laughs> Root your float. Thank you. All right, we're going to pick this up with Jen Murphy. We just had a whole blowjob conversation. <laughs> this is so delicious. I'm sucking this down. Uh, all right, so go up there. Hey, have fun up there. As my wife always tells me, if you can see the audience, they're having a good time. Okay, I'm going to have fun because the last set, I kind of had a panic attack. I couldn't breathe. Do you really have them on stage? Uh, not usually, but I did tonight. It Why only happens when I'm like n- nervous about people watching me. Well, you're what, So that's why you wore the mascot because nobody knew it was you <laughs> no i mean i like to just uh, um be in front of strangers are you a voyeur but when i saw you in the back then i got nervous how do you see me all the way in the back i it's can dark... see i know what's happening are you nocturnal i saw i saw what you was like happening raccoon eyes? how do you see me in the dark <laughs> are you a cat you had that bright shirt on and you walked through the light <laughs> she's pointing to a beige shirt on a hook and <laughs> look at that fucking shirt you had that bright shirt on that lit up <laughs> Oh, no, my Christmas one with the blinking lights. The bad boy had it. Christmas time. With Santa's finger and a green light on the tip. Uh, all right. I guess maybe I gotta go. you should go on stage wearing the Ram costume and you won't be nervous at all. I'm not going to be nervous on this one. If you nod your head, it doesn't really translate to radio. I'm not going to be. <laughs> no. I, I, I nodded my head no. 
Because I, I had panic attacks in this room and I quit comedy for two years because I was afraid to go on stage. You want to talk about that when we come back? Yeah. All right. Hey, don't freak out. Have fun up there. You guys continue to impress me with your jmore.com Amazon banner purchases. Check this one out from our friend David Burgess. Hi. I know it's not Sarah Brady big, but my pup thinks it is. I just used the Amazon link on your webpage and ordered 700 poop bags and some earphones. Thanks for giving good free podcast and making me laugh. David. All right, I got two questions. One, what are you listening to that you have to buy poop bags? Oh, earphones. Okay. So you're or are you listening to music that makes uh your ear that makes smelly things for your ears? I, this is incongruous to me. I know it's not Sarah Brady big, but my pup Ah Puppy, got it. Okay. David Burgess bought seven hundred poop bags to clean up poop for his puppy. And earphones, probably so he doesn't have to listen to it bark. Got it, David? I apologize. Everybody else, go to jmore.com, click the Amazon banner, and buy whatever you want. Amazon gives us a kickback. I love you guys. Put your name on it. All right, we just got off stage. Jen Murphy, great job. That was a much more fun crowd, I thought, than the first show. Did you agree? Um, I don't know. Well, yeah, I guess so. I like the first crowd, though. Oh, because you only had to see him for you. Had I only so had to see shorter. him for ten minutes. <laughs> no, you did longer than that. Um, yeah, the second crowd was super fun. Usually, second show Friday is notoriously bad. Really? Yeah, it's weird because they've been drinking oh, yeah, right they, after work. Just drink, 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 they drink, were drunk. drink. They were drunk for sure. Um, we're, all right. I don't want to get back to all the blowjob stuff because I don't. Want, I don't want it to go. No. Because I'm really gleaning information, and there's not a lot of comedy to be mined there. No, 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 no. I don't want to talk about that. How do we get on that subject? Uh, we, I don't know. You were talking, but on stage. Did it come from the Ram? <laughs> yeah, the Ram. Something about you <laughs> as the Temple City Ram made you need to talk about uh, all the thoughts that you think. Oh. You're like the uh, like the Scarecrow in Wizard of Oz. I'd be all the thoughts. I'd be busy thinking. I could be another Lincoln. Um. What were you saying on stage about size not mattering, but hardness matter? What is it? Oh, about vegans. I said if you're um, that size doesn't necessarily matter, but hardness does, and that's why you should not date a vegan. Now they have trouble. Is that true? Well, I don't know. Maybe it happened once. I can't say it's true for everyone. I, let's make but believe it's true. But doesn't it make sense to you because it takes you have to. This is what I thought of it because I, I'm a runner. <laughs> And you have to eat red meat as a runner because it's good for your blood. Yeah. To pump the blood. So if you're not eating meat, it makes sense that you would have like erectile dysfunction because it's not pumping blood down to your area. You're not area. eating blood. But I think you pump your own blood to the area. I don't think you have to digest other blood. Listen, like, you need red meat to live and to make... I'm, hey, I'm not a vegan. I think they're weird. I think they're a little kooky. Happiness. Uh, and I, when people do it for ethical reasons, uh, that to me makes me... And I'm going to get emails for this, but whatever. Whatever, dude. I just thought it made a lot of sense that somebody would have trouble if their body no, is made starved. Per- when you said it on stage, it made perfect sense to me. I was like, I just thought of like soy beans and like, you know, cheese farts. And That's what I said. You can't get hard off tofu. Tofu is what I meant to a say. Tofu you're dick. Funnier than, you're fun. <laughs> tofu. He's got tofu dick. <laughs> Vegans don't like it. Guys come up to me and they're like, I don't have any problems. I'm like, all right, fine. I don't care. I like how a guy approaches you like that's his pickup line. Like, hey, like, hey man, I had tofu this morning. I had tofurky. Well, then they get all cocky and they're like, I'll show you. I'm like, I don't need to see your dick. Great line, bro. <laughs> hey, I'm a vegan. Shit's yeah. up, man. Um, So you don't know. You want to have babies, but you think time's running out on you? I think time's. Oh, yeah. It's almost gone. My time's almost gone. It's not looking good. Wait, you run marathons? Yeah. How many have you done? 13. I think people, you want to hear my theory about marathon runners? Yeah. Uh oh. People, oddly, I had this conversation with Joan Van Ark at a party at Shamar Moore's house. Let me pick up those bizarre names that I just dropped. <laughs> Shamar, hi, 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 it was Pat O'Brien. I was at Shamar Moore's house. Shamar Moore from Criminal Minds was my neighbor, and he had this weird party, and Joan Van Ark was there, and I used to see her running around the Hollywood Reservoir all the time. I would run three miles and tap out. She'd be there all damn day. I think people that do marathons have intimacy issues. I said that like Louis Guzman. People that run marathons? How did you get that connected? Okay. How long does it take you to get your act together to leave the house to do like your 10-mile run? 
around. To get ready to go run? I you don't wake know. up to, like, let's say you do a 10 mile run when you're training. Just ballpark it. From the time I wake up, an hour. Oh, all right. That's an hour. And then you run 10 miles to train? Sure, yeah. How long does that take you? Hmm, hour and 20 minutes. Okay. Then you got to drive back. We're now at three hours. And then when you come home, you got to shower, right? I do have intimacy issues, but how did oh, you connect oh, oh, oh. that? Wait, wait, wait. When you, I'm telling you, when you come home, you got to shower, yeah. shampoo, condition, blow yeah. dry, yeah. then put your clothes on, then eat a little bite. I put my clothes on before I do all of that, though. Five, you put your clothes on before you get in the shower? I don't like being naked. Five hours without human contact. Well, I don't have any human contact anyway if I live alone. How are you going to have human contact when you're running through the fucking hills of Altadena? I have a lot of stuff to think about. I need to run it out. I think I hit a nerve here. I can't just sit and think in my apartment. Right, but you're also not going to meet people when you're running at seven miles an hour through the goddamn, you know, well, a, a track of high school. Well, I'm not out there to meet people, Jay. I'm not there to figure shit out. <laughs> That's not why. You, why do you run marathons? No, I... Well, it seems like there be... It's a be, challenge. Yeah, I mean, so it's is really, chess. It's really hard and you want to die, but then when you finish, it's a really good adrenaline rush so you know play speed chess with an old black guy in washington square park it's an accomplishment life is all about accomplishments it seems and this is my thing with marathons too it seems like you should get more for finishing a marathon than a piece of paper that says you finished a marathon and you get a medal yeah i need a more big, than that heavy metal. if i'm gonna run my nipples bloody i need a little more than a goddamn piece of paper and a participatory it's satisfaction with, yeah that's you know you can be there's you can do the goddamn crossword puzzle for that I'm not smart. I can't do crossword puzzles. Don't say that, Jen. I'm really dumb. Jen, you say that really all the time. Stupid. Don't do it. You're not dumb. You're a smart girl. <laughs> not anybody can be the the ram. <laughs> so, oh. all right. So, how old were you? You started doing comedy late in life. Yeah, like 30. And what did you do before you did comedy? I lived in New York. I was. I wanted to be a theater actress. Without I don't singing. I think I was very good. <laughs> yeah, no. Then I got into drama. It was my teacher that got me into stand-up because I would try and do dramatic scenes and he always said I was being funny. Then you got into drama? Is that what you were going to say? And I was going to say, doesn't every woman? <laughs> I like, always thought it- I'd be a good dramatic actress because I was a really depressed teenager, but it doesn't always <laughs> translate. When you were depressed, did you think to yourself, this would be such a good scene of me sulking yeah. in my room right like, now? Like I really am good at crying. So, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you cry I while cry. you're ever? Do you ever cry when you're jogging? I have. It has been a long time Come now. Come on. I have before. Yeah. Do you cry? You so you cry often? Well, no. I just I feel like any emotion that comes into me takes the form of tears. Like anger turns into tears. Mine turns into sadness. Di- turns diarrhea. Into tears. <laughs> it does. I think. Like, oh, really? Oh yeah. I've had Maddie that happen when I've it. gone to funerals. You get diarrhea at funerals. <laughs> <laughs> you do? Yeah. <laughs> I lived in New York. Why did I don't, don't want to the... bring it down, but I lived there at 9-11, and I had a lot of diarrhea. Because you went to everybody's All funerals? Day. Just funeral, funeral, funeral. You just went door to door? Well, they were just happening around, and, it... and then you would hear those you would hear those Irish bagpipes, and then it would just trick a nerve. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty good point. If you need to lose weight, you'd go to a mortuary. Yeah. Or just go to a graveyard and dribble it out. Because your emotions take on a physical life. Is that true? Mine do. I think if you can't handle it mentally, it goes physically. We were talking about a little bit about that earlier off stage. You said you had panic first show. And then second show, you said you had panic like last sentence of your set. Yeah. Why? You were doing great. Well, if it wasn't great, really. It could have been better. I'm a bad judge of com- I don't know, comedy. <laughs> I just watch somebody say they do great, and I'm like, yeah, that's Jay. He's always putting fucking gold stars in everybody's folder. That sucks. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think I just, if you get into your head too much, then it starts causing panic. I don't know how, this is the thing I don't understand also, is the whole, your whole life, it seems, is you've wanted to, you said it yourself, you wanted to be cool. And what you're doing is cool. You're a comic. Like, we're, it's cool. Like, not to sound like a dick, but we're cool. We're com- Like, nobody really does what we do. And then you're on stage in front of a group of people that have no idea you're going to be there. And then 300 people are laughing at what you're saying. You're the coolest person in the room. What part of that goes up into your head and rattles around? 
to a negative emotion? Um, I don't know. Just that it could be better. 